Former President Donald Trump is facing his fourth indictment this year. This after being charged in Georgia for racketeering, something that's been used historically against organized crime like the mafia. Destiny Wells is the former Democratic candidate for Secretary of State, and Rob Kendall is the co-host of the Kendall and Casey Show on WIBC. They join us tonight for our unfiltered segment. Good to see you both. Uh, we'll start with your initial reactions to the latest indictment, and Destiny, we'll start with you tonight. What, what were your initial thoughts? Hey, well, this is, like you said, the fourth indictment. This is in a state court, so different from the other three that were federal. 18 others um, in cahoots with the former president and 41 total criminal accounts, including RICO, which, like you said, um, traditionally was against heads of the mafia that were too smart to handle the drugs. So this is like a bigger picture, larger enterprise. So I was very happy to see this case come forward, and I'm looking forward to some of the victims um, of this former administration be vindicated. Like like Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. Go ahead, Rob. Well, they've now hit him with more charges than Dahmer, Gacy, Bundy, and BTK combined. I mean, that's how ridiculous this is uh, This is getting at this point. And it's, it's laughable. Every single time the Bidens are under investigation or bad news comes out about the Bidens, a new set of charges come against Donald Trump. It's laughable. So, so Rob, uh, how do you think this is going to affect the election? Well, I think in a Republican primary, it helps Trump, right? Because every time one of these charges come out against him, he goes up in the polls. And he even said at the most recent rally, hey, I think I'm one indictment away from winning the election. Now, how it plays in a general, it remains to be seen. Do people believe it's a weaponization of the government against a guy because of his political opinions? Or does it turn people off? That remains to see how Trump uh, campaigns and capitalizes on this. Destiny, uh, Rob is, is saying that this is all political. Your thoughts? Hey, I obviously am biased because I'm an, a lawyer, right? So I love to see that the rule of law is being upheld. Again, you see it not only at the federal level, which each one of those grand juries, by the way, was upwards of 20 people at the state level around 10. So like we're implicating a lot of the public to just say that it's political. I don't think those people who were impaneled on the grand jury felt it was political. They were looking at very personal stories um, when they decided that these indictments should go forward. Uh, as far as politically with the presidential election going forward, I'm kind of happy to see the Republican Party being fractured. You know, if we want to talk about Trump versus Biden, we have a majority Republican House right now uh, in Congress, and I don't see them, um, you know, going after President Biden and trying to impeach him. And so what I see right now is a victory for the rule of law, and I look forward to this going forward in court. Well, to that point, Destiny, put your legal hat on. How complicated of a case is this one? Well, this is a lot of charges. Again, like we talked about, this is RICO, right? So we're going to be looking at at this from a very vast enterprise perspective about how everybody was playing um, with each other in uh, a coordination this effort. We have people who are preachers from Illinois. We have Kanye West, former publicist, who went down to one of the election workers' doorsteps and tried to intimidate her. The good thing about this case is that it's going to be on TV and Americans are going to be able to see very personal stories. These aren't just going to be headlines. And they're going to be able to relate and see what it is like for innocent Americans when they are trying to uphold our election process um, to be attacked by the president of the United States. It's Rob, gonna I'll be let, transparent. I'll let you get in here, Rob. Go ahead. Well, I mean, I'm surprised they haven't accused him of kidnapping the Lindbergh baby or being involved in the Manson family at this point. I mean, these the, these newest charges are just completely ridiculous. So what, Meadows and Giuliani? I mean, they might as well have just thrown uh, Pauly Walnuts and Tony Soprano in there with, the, with them while, while they're at it. And this is the point. When you see what has gone on in these major metropolitan cities all across this country, how they were literally in many cases, and it happened here in Indianapolis, burned to the ground, and these prosecutors, whether it's in Fulton County or it's in New York, do absolutely nothing with these very dangerous, insane, violent offenders, and yet they will go to the ends of the earth to prosecute these people. It's laughable. Here's the thing. These charges were posted on the court website before the grand jury had returned. Everybody saw it, it's been screenshotted, they've admitted they did it. How would you post charges before a grand jury has even convened or issued what their recommendation? I think a lot of people believe the fix is in. Destiny, before we say goodbye, I'll let you respond. 
Hey, that's all he has. He has to argue at the fringe of procedure because he knows as far as substance that um, Donald Trump and team has lost. Rudy Giuliani has already admitted in civil court that he went after Ruby Freeman um, incorrectly and that he blamed her for things that she did not do. Like this is a Gordian knot that Republicans are just not going to untie at this point. And I, again, am happy to see it play out in the um, American court system. And we all will be watching. Rob Kendall, Destiny Wells, always good to see you both. Thank you for joining us.